right, my talk today is on modern druidry. So, we will begin with the question I am asked the most, and that is, what is a druid? <laughs> Simply put, a druid is a priest of nature. Um, often when someone who's unfamiliar with the term druid or druidry um, they have an idea that's based from kind of classical writings, the writings of Caesar or Pliny, um, or Pliny, however you pronounce it, I'm not entirely sure. And they think of these um, white-robed men, long beards, um, or they think of the lithographs from the Celtic Renaissance of the 18th and 19th century. Or the image sometimes comes to mind from the Asterix comics, of Getafix, the Druid, <laughs> or um, Druids from Dungeons and Dragons role-playing games, or for the more computer literate, the um, World of Warcraft games. Some people equate Druids with a thing of the past, um, our Iron Age ancestors whom the Romans wiped out long ago. But Druids and Druidry are alive and well today. The word druid was used in the Iron Age to describe uh, the priests. It comes from the word dru, which means oak or doorway, and wid, which means wisdom. So they were the people who held the wisdom of the oak, the wisdom of natural world, and also the wisdom of the thresholds between worlds. Druidry as a religion was not called druidry then. People simply follow the gods of their own environment. The Druids were mediators between the gods and the people. More specifically, the Druids counseled kings and held enormous political power. What the Druids were called before the word Druid came about, we don't know. We'll never know. But before our Iron Age ancestors, we know that humans lived on these Titanic Isles for many, many millennia. It was our Neolithic, our Stone Age ancestors, who built the stone circles we now associate with the Druids, such as Stonehenge. We don't know what they called their religion, we don't know what they called their spiritual leaders, and we'll never know. But having the same basic human lineage, we have an idea as to what they may have believed in, instinctually. Druidry throughout the ages, whether it be a shamanistic religion of our Neolithic forebears, or in a more political leadership role of our Iron Age ancestors, this Druidry was never written down. Druidry was an oral tradition it was something that could change and be suited to the time and place wherein it was practiced. Our ancestors knew that religion and spirituality must evolve, that to be truly attuned to the natural cycles and the seasons, to know the growing and the fading, life and death and regeneration, you could not be bound by dogma. They understood the impermanence of all things, and they knew that to write it down would hinder it, it would restrict it. Druidry has no theology, it has no dogma, it has no written words that must be adhered to. It's still a growing and it's still an evolving tradition. That's not to say that the wisdom of the past can or should be ignored. We have Roman carvings on altars throughout Britain that describe the name of the deities that our ancestors worshipped. It gives us an idea, a little insight into their lives. Christian monks who wrote down the myths of the Celtic people that we changed them to suit their sensibilities. These too we can look to for clues into the past. We can look to the names and the texts of what our ancestors were attuning to in their search for religion, in their search for spirituality, 
They can guide us, they can provide marker points for our journey. They're not, however, to be slavishly adhered to, for they're not of our time. Indeed, they're not relevant in many ways to modern living. So we can look to our Neolithic forebears, who mapped out the seasons and the skies with their stone circles. We can get an idea as to what they held dear in their agrarian lifestyle. We can look to the classical writings of the Romans, those Roman conquerors with a pinch of salt, to see what they had to say about those who challenged Roman leadership and the Roman Empire. But it's the present moment that we must look to, first and foremost. It's the modern world around us, right here and right now, that has the most relevance to modern Druidry. Druidry is still, as it has always been, about deep relationship. It's deep relationship with the natural world. It's about knowing your home environment. It's about knowing the cycles that it goes through, what lives and dies on the land, what nourishes the land, what isn't nourished by the land. It's knowing the migration patterns of birds or the lost waterways that flow underneath cities such as London. It's knowing the name of trees and what herbs can be used to heal what ailments. It's knowing the, the night sky it's understanding the ebb and the flow of the tide. It's about dropping dualistic thinking of us and them, of human and nature, and seeing that they're all connected. We cannot exist without everything else. We're not separate from the natural world. We're soft mammals. We're monkeys with car keys. We're animals. We're still trying to make sense of the world. We know that we're an integral part of the cycle. And we know that we have to work within that cycle for harmony and for balance. So being a druid is devoting your life to constant study of the natural world. It never stops. It's the study of history, of geology, of geography of languages, of art, and more. It's about understanding the world. So we begin in our current environment. We learn where our water comes from. We learn where our food comes from. We learn where the sun rises and sets from the back window of our home, perhaps in the top bedroom, as we look out every morning. We learn where the sun rises and sets on those special days of the solstices and equinoxes. We celebrate the turning wheel of the seasons. We celebrate the planting and the harvesting. We celebrate the tides of fertility, of life and death. And in that understanding, that's where relationship happens. We open our souls to understand even more for in understanding the world around us, we begin to understand ourselves. As I said at the beginning of this talk, a druid is a priest of nature. Being a priest of nature is about bridging the gap between nature and the self. It's about understanding on a soul deep level that there is no separation. Working as a priest of nature, we might lead our community towards a more harmonious relationship with the land. We might work in healing with animals using massage or reiki. We might work in the courts of law, finding truth and justice in the modern world scarce as that might seem. We work in schools, 
teaching and educating the next generation. We might be stay-at-home parents raising our children as best we can to prepare and to nurture them for the future. How we work as a priest of nature is less important than actually doing the work. For the word druid here, it's not a noun, it's a verb. When we consider the sum of the whole, rather than its parts in everything that we do, then we are druid. When we, when we see the bigger picture, when we understand that life is not a journey of our own, but that it's the journey of countless souls singing together, in a great song, then we are druid. When we learn, when we teach, when we seek soul-to-soul -soul relationship with the blackbird, with the trees, with the river, then we are druid. Druid is not what you say. Druid is what you do. As such, druidry is a way of life and not a religion or spirituality to be practiced once or twice a week or at a set time each day. It's something that happens moment to moment. Druidry is everything that you do from washing up the dishes, hopefully with a, an ecological dish soap. It's about installing solar panels on your roof. It's about choosing organic food or growing your own if you have the time and space. It's about making choices all the time and acting upon those choices. It's bearing in mind the entirety of the natural world with every single choice and with every single action that you make. It's understanding the consequences of your action and always thinking about those consequences. It's taking a close look at your modes of consumerism of expenditure. It's about deep critical thinking. It's about analysis, self-analysis. And it's also about heart-wrenching emotion and passion. It's about ecstasy and it's about the mundane. Druidry is at the heart of these British eyes. It's the song of the land, the religion and spirituality, spirituality of the land that is speaking to us, that is speaking through us, as it speaks through everything. It's interpreted by our human minds, and it's an expression of those songs that we hear from the land. In our expression of that, we can show our reverence and we can show our devotion to the land that is our home. But this connection is not relegated solely to the British Isles. We carry it with us wherever we go, wherever we are in the world. I am not a native British person, but since I moved here, I sought soul deep connection to the land trying to hear the song of the land, to interpret it, to express it with my own being. We can think of it as native shamanism, perhaps. Siberian shamanism is the druidry of its land. Native American shamanism is the druidry of its land. Druidry can be seen as a language more than a religion or a spirituality. It doesn't matter what you call it, what matters most is how you practice and express it in that soul deep relationship with the land. It's all about honour and reverence. When we see the sacredness in all things, we're able to act instead of react. We're able to make conscious choices about everything that we do. We become human beings, not human thinkings or um, human doings. I, I am a druid and I perform ceremonies for people in my community such as hand fastings and weddings 
child naming ceremonies, funerals. I also work at a concert hall in their communications department. I work from home most of the time, writing books and articles, mostly about Druidry. And I'm also the founder and teacher at Druid College. I'm also a 42-year-old woman who loves David Bowie and Taylor Swift. I bow to the stag when I see him on my walks upon the heath near my home. I drum in the forest with friends and then come back and have tea and crafty knitting and crocheting evenings with them at home. I am a druid. I do all these things and more. Druidry has changed a lot since ancient times, and well it should, for I personally see no reason to divide auguries from the entrails of birds as the Iron Age Celtic Druids did. It's a little bit gross if you think about it. <laughs> I have no desire to cancel kings on their marriages or to advise them on warfare. I dread to think what Druidry would be like today if the Druids still held all that political power that they used to in the Iron Age. We know all too well how much power corrupts. Druidry today is wonderfully diverse. It has many branches upon its tree that celebrates each person's relationship with the natural world, and each relationship will be different. We're not ruled by the past. We dance in the present moment. We're awake and we're aware. We're awake and we're aware of the past and of the future, living in the, in the, in the present moment. The modern druid truly makes a choice to live. We're not sedated or we're not satisfied by alcohol or television. We breathe with the storm. We run with the deer. We sing with the blackbird. We revere the land. We revere the ancestors, ancestors of blood, ancestors of place, ancestors of tradition. We honor the spirits of place, the cycles, the seasons. We quest inspiration constantly soul deep inspiration that allows us to continue our reverence for the sacredness of all things. Druidry is perfect freedom in understanding that responsibility is a gift, it's not a burden. Our values and our ethics are held very close, for we understand the repercussion of every action that we take or we try to. Modern Druids understand with our hearts and not just with our heads that which the famous bard has famously quoted as there are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. That, to me, is modern Druidry. Thank you. If anyone has any questions, please feel free. You can ask now or you can come and see me one to one if you wish. <laughs> well, thank you all for coming. Yes, yes. So I have uh, I've written three books. Uh, on Druidry and Druid-related um, topics. This is my latest one. This is the Awan Alone, which is an introductory guide to following the Druid path um, as a solitary. So sometimes it might be hard to find other Druids in your area, or you might not wish to do a correspondence course, per se, until maybe you've got some more information to hand. So this is a short little introductory guide as part of the Pagan Portals series, and this whole series is about introductory guides to different topics.